Hi guys, sorry we missed our class meeting today. Um, so what we've done for the last couple of weeks has been working with multiplying polynomials. If you um, recall in 7-2, we were multiplying um, monomials by binomials, uh, binomial by trinomials, and then this week we focused for 7-3 on um, multiplying special cases. And I've been seeing the work we've been turning in. It looks like people are understanding it pretty well. So we're going to be moving on to 7-4 today, which is factoring polynomials. And before we do, I want to do a quick reminder of some of the things that we've already done. We've done things like 3x times 4x minus 3. And we've done it in a couple of ways where you can just distribute and show that 3 times 4 is 12 and x times x is x squared, and 3x times negative 3 would be negative 9x. We've also done this using the box method. Typically, do we do it when we've got a binomial by a binomial or something bigger, but it works with this as well. So 3 times 4 and x times x would get us 12x squared, and 3x times negative 3, negative 9x. So in the box, we have the same terms that we got here from distributive property. Well, now we're moving on to reviewing the idea of greatest common factor. I think you guys were introduced to the idea of greatest common factor probably in fourth or fifth grade. So greatest means it's the largest. Common means that Every term we're looking at shares that factor in common, and factor means it's things that we can multiply or things that we can divide. So in this case, 3x is a factor, and it's being multiplied by 4x minus 3. And what we did is we distributed it. Well, what we're going to be doing now with 7, 4 is we're going to be factoring polynomials. And really, factoring in this case is a fancy word for saying we're going to undistribute things. So I want to start off first with a quick review of something. Um, if we're talking about greatest common factor of numbers, let's say we're doing 160, we would start listing factors of 100, like we know 2 times 50. Um, 20 times 5, 10 times 10, etc. For 60, we could put 5 times 12, 6 times 10. There's a common factor right there. But I also see this 20 over here, and I know that 60 can be 20 times 3. So in this case, 20 is the greatest common factor. So what we've done with those numbers is we took what we knew about how to multiply and get them and we broke it down into um, factor pairs. Well, when we're factoring polynomials, we want to break them down even further. We want to break them down into their prime factors. So here's an example from 7-4 in our book. 6x squared plus 10x. And I want to look at that and think, well, what's the prime factors of 6? 1 times 2 times 3. And then there's 2x's. So I've taken 6x squared and I've broken it down to all of its smallest parts. I'm going to do the same with 10x. And I would get 1 times 2 times 5 times x. And if I want to find the greatest common factor of those, I see that there's a 1 and a 2, and a 1 and a 2. And there's an x and an x. There's two x's here, but there's only one here. And so it has to be the greatest common factor. And they don't both have two x's in common. They only have one. So I'm going to rewrite this 6x squared plus 10x. And I'm going to pull that 1 times 2, which is 2, and the x to the front. 
like I said earlier, factory polynomials is really a fancy way of saying I'm going to undistribute them. If I undistribute 2x from this, what am I left with? 3x. Or if I take 6x squared and I divide 2x out of it, all that's left is 3x. What's left for the 10x? 5. If I take 10x and I divide it by 2x, the 10 divided by 2 gives me 5, and x divided by x becomes an invisible 1, leaving me with just 5. I can check that by doing the box method and putting all the pieces of my undistributed in the box to see if I come back to the same terms from the very beginning. And that shows that it worked. Let's try it with another one. 12x squared minus 16x. What do they both have in common? Well, I know 12 and 16 both have a 4 in com common, but I'm going to show it by putting down the prime factors. Sorry, didn't have the time symbols there. So 12x squared broken down to its primes is 1 times 2 times 2. That's 4 times 3 is 12, and then both x's. This one gets a negative 1 instead of a positive 1 because it's a negative 16. And then 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, and a single x. So what do we have in common? Two twos and an x. So when I rewrite this, or I undistribute it, I'm dividing out the 4. And what goes inside the parentheses is what's left of these two terms. After I divide out 4x, what's left here is 3x. And after dividing out the 4x here, what's left is negative 4. I can check my work. Those terms match these terms, so I know I did it right. Let's try one more together. 4x squared minus 8x minus 6. When I look at this, I see this is a trinomial, which is a little bit different than what we had up here. We had binomials. And I also see there's an x term here and an x here, but there is no x here. So I'm only going to be dividing a number out. I know that this is going to be 2 times 2, oops, 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 x's. And then negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x. And the 6 is negative 1 times 2 times 3. The only thing that all three of those have in common is a 2. So when I rewrite this, I get 2 divided out. And if I divide 4x squared divided by 2, I'm left with a 2x squared. And that's what's down here. Negative 8x divided by 2 is going to give me negative 4x. And you can see that here. Negative 6 divided by 2 gives me negative 3. To check it, I'm going to redistribute it by multiplying that 2 by those terms and see if I get back to where I started. And I do. So I will be posting just a few problems for you to practice and I'll put the solutions out on Friday. And that means on Monday, we will be able to move on to the next things that we glued into our notebooks way back on March 13th. So let me know if you have questions and I hope to hear from you soon.